One day in the bar on a Friday night, there was some fat dude in the, in the corner of the bar, you know, wearing a flight suit. I'm going, who the heck's that? And he goes, oh, they're F-4 pilots. I'm going, F-4 pilots? And we flew, flew F-4. So I went over there, talked to this guy, and he basically looks at me and goes, man, you're not going to get this job. We stay here till we drop dead. So, you know, the openings are few and far between. And I go, man, this guy's sort of rude. And, and, and I sort of forgot about it. And five years later, here I am, one of those rude dudes, you know. It's sort of ironic how it all comes back around. Every day, this center for tactical air support launches and retrieves hundreds of combat sorties. We represent a lot of people that want to kill us because they wish they were in that position, um, you know, obviously. The ironic part is not necessarily the F-4 pilots, it's the F-4 fanatics, we call them, you know. They're just all over the place. Uh, truly a, um, a live, uh, rambunctious crowd. I mean, sort of groupies when you get right down to it. Uh, and they run the gamut from young people to old people. It's not just Vietnam veterans, it's youngsters that are that, are, that have gotten bitten by the bug for whatever reason, because they live by a base, you know, and say, hey, when I was a kid, these things are flying over, and you know, I, the, the, the jet, jet engine sound is very unique. And they go to an air show, and they, they hear those things again, and just, it just brings back memories. For them, obviously, Vietnam veterans, a different story. You've got the Vietnam guys, that's understandable when a Vietnam guy comes up, Army or Air Force, and tells their story. Army guys especially, man, those are the guys that, you know, cry and, and pet the jet and go, man, that thing saved my life. These people's kids come up there and they know all these things about the F-4 and they can tell you about what it does and what it was used for. So it really is multi-generational, this airplane. That, and I'm not sure what other airplane will do that. Hard to believe that that thing was built when I was born. You know, whatever that magic was. Box, box. Three, two, one, mark. Good mark, drone is destroyed in half. It really lets you know how much of a following this airplane has and how big a deal this last flight really is for, for them, you know, and again, we're, we're here for those people. So in that respect, it's humbling, it's exciting, um, not really sad because in the military you get used to a lot of laughs. So in that respect, you're, you're used to that kind of stuff, but, but this really is special and, and we can feel that. I'm gonna miss going up there, you know, and messing around with the clouds and, 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 and uh, you know, flying through the clouds, the sense of speed, you know, going to Albuquerque, it's always as a pilot, you always get that thing where you're driving with your wife and it's like, holy crap, three hour drive to get to Albuquerque. And then you look at her and go, man, if I was in the F4, I'd be here in 10 minutes. You know, I'm, I'm gonna miss that stuff, uh, getting around. There's no, no better way to fly around the country than fighter error, and especially these last six months with the F4. I mean, it was a rock star, and uh, we got to beat the posse bringing that thing around uh, to all these people, and it was a hoot.